welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> I am your host, Mr. Madeover. And I am his lovely co-host, <laughs> Mrs. Madeover. She's going to clean that thing. I'm going to clean it to the end. I'm going to mess up that just, mic, though. Oh. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we have another guest on who has joined us. Yes. From way, as my grandma used to say, over yonder. Way <laughs> <laughs> Way over yonder. Ah, uh, this woman right here is phenomenal, first of all. Yes. She is the person who has been behind the scene for a while, but yes. now she's in front of the camera. Leading now. Yes. She's a little shy. Shy. She's a little nervous. Nervous. But today, today, she's coming out the box. Yes. And I'm going to let my wife. <laughs> My wonderful, beautiful, my real, oh. my co-host, oh. my everything. Yeah. That's me. The love of my life. <laughs> Introduce this next person. <laughs> <laughs> you just messed up my whole world. Like, what, what do I do after this? Yeah. Like, Introduce. That's what <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say it's the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care, cause I'm a woman. Phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Guys, so it is my pleasure <laughs> to introduce to you Miss Maya V. Blue, Virginia Blue, Boo, whatever you know her as. <laughs> and we are so excited to have her today. We are. Um, and I just had like that, I was looking at the poem and I'm like, mm, how can I introduce her? Cause all this other stuff and I was like, just that particular stanza right. set it off because when we first met, that this is how I see her. Wow. Aww. So the only gripe I have about it that there's no male version of that. I'm not no woman. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm let you proceed on, but I had to put my two cents in there. Uh, I'm sitting there looking like, hold up, wait a minute. Sorry. I'm there's not no, a woman. You're not. But continue on. <laughs> so, there's no, sorry, there's no male version. So welcome, V Blue, to the Made Over Podcast. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys so much. I'm so nervous, but that was awesome. <laughs> oh, you, I mean, you I'm, deserve I'm, it. Just, I'm, I'm feeling a little, a little relax. better now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna let my yeah. wife start with the first question because really? I know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You're on right. fire. You just read that whole poem I, there. That was not, How do you follow up one, after that? that? One stanza. Come on. <laughs> I'm every woman. How I felt that thing. It was such a great intro, though. It really was. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, it, uh, it is a pleasure. So, uh, can you tell the people where you come from, who you are, um, just a little bit overall about who Maya is? Okay. So, so Maya or Virginia Blue? Let's go with Maya first, and then we'll talk about Virginia Blue. The discovery Blue. of yeah. Virginia Blue. Yeah. Right. Okay, so just let's start with me. Okay, so Maya is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, born and raised. Um, I am... Do I, do I have to disclose, you know, like where I work and all that stuff? No, okay. All right, so... I don't want people pulling well, up just, on you. <laughs> don't want people pulling up on me. <laughs> But no, um, I work at a behavioral health center. Um, that's my nine to five life. And then I have the, the entrepreneur life as well. So mm -hmm. kind of juggle both. Um, I am a very, uh, what's the word? Um, very hardworking, um, very strong-minded, independent, um, Go getter, I will say. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, three brothers, one sister, all older, all grown. Um, my parents are still alive. I come from two great parents that raised me to work very, very hard. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, complete um, 
I don't want to say hustler, but hustler. When I and I'm saying that in a good way, right, right. <laughs> Not like you know doing anything illegal. Meaning, he always kept a job, right, gotcha. and always made sure that there was food on the table. Made sure that you were good, regardless. If he had to, you know, lose money, whatever the case was, as long as it was keeping a roof over his children's head, he didn't care what he did. Mm. He got it done. Um, my mom, same thing. She was an educator. Um, so she always kept us in the best schools. So education was always um, priority to mm -hmm. make sure that, you know, you, had, you didn't have to go to college, but you had to finish school. Gotcha. Um, that was her big thing. You can do whatever you want after 12th grade, but you have to finish school. Right. So we were um, always taught to be very respectful in school, make sure there is no getting left back. You better finish mm -hmm. doing what you're supposed to do on yeah. time. Gotcha. Um, so I come from, from two hardworking parents that did not allow, I don't want to say failure, but they didn't allow nonsense. You gotcha. had to work. So that's the just of my that's, that's okay. <laughs> So you have a, a, a great uh, foundation. Yeah. And I think before doing anything, you definitely ha have to have that foundation of backing up people that tell you, listen, don't be out here acting the fool. Mm, right. <laughs> and exactly. I think it, it, it speaks to, number one, your character of who you are. Um, Thank you. It, it shows that you are really, am I jumping ahead? But, uh, but it shows that, <laughs> that you are very um, respectable. Right. Mm -hmm. And a person who can really, you know, feel comfortable talking to and, and understand the aspect of life, you know, yes. and seeing it for what it is, but also seeing that there's the other flip side of that coin, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is what you are in right now, which is your business right now. And I guess right. that's where the V blues come in mm -hmm. at. Right. Yes. And mm -hmm. that's where we're going to pick up how you break that yeah. down right there. Okay. So um, Virginia Blue came from my grandmother who passed away from cancer in 2005. Her mm -hmm. name was Virginia Steely. So Virginia from the brand name Virginia came from her. Blue came from me, as you can see. I'm, I love the color blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so blue, blue has always been um, my, not just my color, but something about the color blue always brought um, peace for me, calm. Mm. Um, when you think of blue, you sometimes you'll think of the sky, the, uh, mm. the reflection of the sky in the ocean, which is blue. Mm. Yeah. Um, the hues of blue are, they're, the tones are calming, like mm -hmm. relaxing for me. So blue has just, I don't know what it was, just blue always just been my, it's been like my, my calm color, my peace color. Gotcha. So, um, that's where that part came from. So I took Virginia and blue, put them together, and that's where Virginia Blue Apparel came from. Wow. And then V Blue is short for um, Virginia Blue. But now, um, I don't want to jump ahead, but now I have another part of V Blue, which is now my purpose or my mantra that goes with it, which is vibrant, blessed, love, union. Okay, could you and, say that again for the people? Just in case sure. somebody went to the bathroom, they couldn't hear, <laughs> or they stuck in traffic, listen to this on the podcast. Yeah. Could you break that down for them again? Sure. Vibrant, blessed, love, and union. So those are, those are or sorry, that is the mantra now for Virginia Blue. Hmm. Um, the, the purpose for that was to show that it's not just about the brand name but there's some purpose and um value behind gotcha. that name as well so i added that mantra actually just uh last the end of last year that's fresh yeah 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 so i'm excited about that and it's been taken very well mm -hmm. people seem oh, to like nice. it yeah yeah it's my turn. Oh yeah. Oh okay. I thought you were like you would. Have I jumped. was, but then I thought about yeah. that whole poem, and I said, "Let me pull back." Because <laughs> you realize, wait, I'm not a woman. It's not a woman. <laughs> so, um, in this transition from your nine to five as Maya, and then mm -hmm. you know taking on that role or that mindset of 
V Blue, what made you want to even go there? So what made you want to go nine to five and now ooh, I'm in the entrepreneurial life? Yeah. Um, well, I guess it would go back to me being um, a teenage, uh, sorry, a young teenager or older, I should say teenager and a young adult because I always worked more than one job. Mm -hmm. So when I was 16, I worked at a barbershop and I worked at the mall. <clears throat> and then when I got to my 20s, I worked at um, a restaurant and I worked at the hotel at, at night. So I always juggled two. There was mm -hmm. never, my mindset was one job was never enough. So mm. I already had the mindset that one stream of income was never going to be enough. I'm with which you. Clearly it is not. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot survive in this world with a Just, yeah. nine to five. I mean, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say that. You can choose to do that. And if that works for you, fine. But I like to live in a um, a mindset of being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Not because, you know, well, I I get paid on Friday and that's all I got. To so not the paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want to live like that. Got you. Um, so I always had that mindset at like 16 when I started working. So when as i got older i was like okay well how many you know more streams of income can i create that are going to be not just jobs but purpose right and then something that i and something that i love to do yeah do i love my nine to five i don't want to say i love it but i like it um somehow god put me in a in this behavioral health facility with um, children. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I really don't yeah. know why. I can't answer that. Yeah. I, I'm there. God put me there for some reason. So maybe could, there is I could, something. I can answer that for you. I don't, and I don't have any children, so it's not like you know. But I think I think it teaches you patience. Yeah. It's. I think it's a great training ground <laughs> oh, for yeah. patience mm -hmm. and endurance mm -hmm. for your next level. So like after right. you finish with this. The next level, mm -hmm. you like, man, I done dealt with that. I'm not nine to five. And then your kids and right. the behavior part. Yeah. Come, on, right. come on to make it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's where a lot of times we have to look at our nine yeah. to five. For those mm -hmm. who have that, um, I would say, um, I'm about to get up out of here mindset. Yeah. Out of the blue, blue collar type mentality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I call it the hamster wheel, you know. Yeah. But those who think like that, I think. Our job prepare us for the next level. Mm -hmm. Like these right. different tools that we take, as far mm -hmm. as you know, dealing with whatever you deal with on your uh, on your job. Mm -hmm. I job. guarantee you, your next job or, or your next task, you can mm -hmm. be like, man, this ain't nothing. Yeah, I dealt with that mm -hmm. <laughs> a long right, time right, ago. Right, yeah, right. but that's what I think is for. It's you. always a gear. It's always a prep. Something like yeah. that. Uh, okay. And I, I just said that just to say that I didn't plan to work there. It wasn't like, you yeah. know, like some people want to be um, lawyers or doctors, teachers, so they plan to yeah. you know, take those steps to be to be in that position. I didn't plan to work at this um, facility. It was just that's another another <laughs> part of the story. Because what? what I was going to say was I left my corporate job of 15 years. I hope I'm not jumping no, you're good. good. Yeah. Okay. People in traffic so I, with us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they stuck. They got to listen. <laughs> so long story short, I left my corporate job of 15 years to open up my first store. And then where the first store was located, it wasn't in the best location. So I was mm. there for um, one year and ended up closing that store. But before closing the store, I left that job because of being tired of feeling like a slave, if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. I'm yeah. with you. Um, yeah. It wasn't, it, the money was great, but my peace wasn't yeah. great. Mm. So I had lots of money, made lots of money there, could buy whatever I wanted, but was I happy? No. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely not happy there because I didn't have my peace. So I would leave that nine to five and not even be in a good state to go to my store. My oh, mindset no. was like already drained and done. So by the time I got there, you figure I had really no energy, but I'm just there. Yeah. So um, 
sorry, long story short, yes, I ended up closing that store to find a, another store at a be- better location later. Yeah. Okay. So in the in the time frame of looking for a new store, I still had to find source of income. Mm-hmm. That's how the behavioral health nine to five came along. So that's yeah. how I ended up there. Wow. So, so you you have no quit in these what it sound like. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't sit down. <laughs> like, stop, what? <laughs> and it sounds like um, when we did Sam. Yeah. That's what it kind of reminds, but it's just an older version. And um, V Blue Sam is um, a young, a 17 year old that we uh, we interview on our podcast. And she, like, just the. Shh. The things that she poured out at 17 is you're basically saying the same thing, yeah. you know, but you're older. Yeah. Right. So, but right. It's, it's parallel. And that's kind of what just hearing just the background and the can't quit. There's no yeah. tapping out, you know, in the yeah. wrestling <laughs> term because she was a wrestler. Uh, or okay. is a wrestler. Yeah, she is a wrestler. Um, okay. And so she was saying. State champ. State champ. Yes. Oh, state wow. show, state Congrats. champ. Um, and a county over from us, and that's what she was saying. Like, there's no tapping out when you're in, you know, when you're on the map. So in right. life, there's no tapping out. Um, mm-hmm. and then if you get, she was saying, if you get pinned, you're either pinned because you know you given up, or you pinned because you stuck. So mm-hmm. we were just saying, like, yeah. you know, even though you were in a moment of being stuck, right. you didn't give up. You and you didn't right. tap out. You just found the next move. Yeah. Right. So go ahead and get you from being stuck. So I always exactly. say, make the next move yeah. your best move. So. Best move, yeah. And yeah. I have a, a, um, I always say I live by the by any means necessary mindset. Mm-hmm. By any means, I'm gonna do what I need to do to get through to the next step. Mm-hmm. There is no, you know, oh, I'm just going to sit back and collect unemployment and just be oh, um, yeah. lazy and right. make have people feel sorry for me and I don't live like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, mine is always, if there's a will, there's a way. There's a way. I'm mm-hmm. the will. All I got to do is find the way. Find the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? <laughs> And, and by any people. means, you will yeah. find the way. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the crazy part is, all it takes is effort. Mm-hmm. Effort. That's all it right. takes. And that's what right. people lack in business, life, everything. Mm-hmm. everything. It's just right. effort. Like right. getting up and just doing something. Just doing something, right. You know what I'm saying? Like pursue something. And I think right. what you said is key. Like you didn't say I'm pursuing this or I got this business because of money. Right. You said no. I have a purpose behind yeah. it. You yeah. said I'm doing this with a purpose. Like you're doing these things with a purpose, and I mm-hmm. think that'll take you further than mm-hmm. any type of money. You said you had the money, but you just didn't have happy. no peace. Yeah, no, I have peace. no peace. Yeah. yeah, and peace of mind is everything. You cannot put a price tag on peace of mind. Yeah, I don't I care how much money yeah. you make. And I think that's where so many people get stuck because mm-hmm. they always think that the money is money. what they're se- well that's the that's the thing that they're seeking. Yeah. And right. they don't seek to find out what they're passionate, you know, the passion or the purpose behind it. Um mm-hmm. and it's kind of like me, like I'm teaching, but teaching mm-hmm. is something that I'm passionate about and yeah. I mean, you know, I hate to say it for some people, but I'll do this job without you know, without pay because that's just right. a passion. But then there's so many people that get stuck because it's like, oh, I get the money and the time that I mm-hmm. want. And then but then you're just there. You have no heart. Right. You're just, you know, so it's I can relate to that having the peace. Yeah. And then I've been in positions too, nine yeah. to five, where it was like, I, I got the money. The money looks yeah, nice. The money's nice. Yeah. But <laughs> then just the inside, that moral standards the values it's like all right. that's kind of you know right the job won't allow that to just be how it's supposed to be you know once you have the good mor- morals yeah. and values behind you so exactly yeah I so agree. um what what is your um as i always ask you like like what is your end goal what is your ultimate goal as far as with your apparel and the things that you do um well one of the um if I can take it with you in steps, because it's not just one thing. If Got it's you. Okay, I'm with you. Okay to say. Um, so the first thing was to get out and try to put myself in the light, um, because for for so for so long I was 
I think hiding to, mm. in a sense, not hiding because I was afraid to show people what I'd love to do or my talent, but you just, and, and at some point in your life, you have a moment where you doubt yourself a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think everybody had that moment before. Um, so you get scared because you, you know, you had that moment where you feel like, well, if I do this and take that next step, are they going to receive it that way? Mm-hmm. And then if they don't, how is that going to look? Yeah. You know, so you, you're afraid of failure, even though, you know, no one's saying you're going to fail, but in your mind already, you're just thinking like, well, what's the negative instead mm-hmm. of just going right to the positive. Gotcha. So one of my goals um, leaving 2020 was to not have that mindset to just think of put yourself in the light let let yourself you know let yourself be exposed to the point where people can see what you really do whether they like it or not if you believe in it it doesn't matter right and that's what i had to really force myself to to start with so that i can get to the next level Mm -hmm. and reach my goal because if my goal is to go to the next level i can't do that hiding behind Mm -hmm. yeah Wow. anything so um i have gotten past that i'm proud of myself for that welcome to the podcast um i've been you know doing some some lives on social media that have were so so not in my goals at all but that has happened now so now i feel a little more comfortable talking to people and saying what Virginia Blue is really about. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know, oh, well, I don't want to talk about it because I'm not really a big brand or, you know, I'm not Chanel or Gucci, so I'm not going to matter, you know, to certain people. But mm. that, that was my mentality, you know, like I'm not the big guy, so they don't care about this little brand. And there's no such thing as little. Mm. Um, my mentor says, never put little in front of anything of yours. Yeah. So regardless if I'm a small business or not, in my mind, I'm, I'm big. Yeah. Regardless how how you receive me, in my mind, I'm, I have to be yeah. big. Right. Yeah. So. Wow. Um. So the ultimate goal um, was to expo- to get the exposure. I'm finally getting that. Thank God. Um, the pandemic helped that because if we didn't have the pandemic, I would not have been on social media. Mm. Um. I wouldn't have talked and networked with other people the way I'm doing right now because so it brought you out of your to. comfort zone. Yeah, it brought me out of my comfort zone. Wow, I was forced to do stuff that I would never do before because <laughs> I was just too scared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, now that the comfort zone has come, you know, full circle, and I'm I'm a little more relaxed. I think I can get to the next level, which mm-hmm. is um, not necessarily to. First, can I just say this? My first goal was to always have um, a storefront. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had two now. I'm okay with saying I've done the storefront thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I love it. It was great. But is that my final? Yeah. Nope. Uh, nope. I feel you. I understand yeah. you. On that yeah. Part. Yeah. Um, so now I feel like. It's time to go more, in the skies uh, now. It's called online. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now it's got to be a different mindset of how this world stopped last year. And if yeah. you didn't have a plan, that's not a good thing, right. you know, not to have a plan. So thankfully, yeah. the, my plan was to take my business online, which I had never really focused on before. I thought about it, of course, and I, I wanted to do it. But and I had the online business already there, but I didn't make it a priority. I made mm-hmm. the store a priority okay. because to me, on foot and tr- um, coming into a store was more important. Mm. But you can't reach one million people in a store. No. But online, but yeah. online you can. Yeah. yeah. So I had to think again, not little or small, but big. Like okay, yeah. the store is is a small piece to your success of your business, but the online exposure. And the traveling exposure, getting more people, more you know, yeah, into yeah. you and knowing who you are, that will help to take it to the next level. Wow. Yeah, so. I think um, uh, I was saying basically in 2019, mm-hmm. before everything, 2018, 2019, 
I yeah. have begun to study online marketing agencies mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how to like, I was just in this mind, like, yeah. because for me, I believe if we begin to pay attention to how the world is, it was mm-hmm. like I was gearing up for, I had my online store for a, yeah. how long I have my, uh, oh, wow. I've had uh, my online store for a very yeah. long for a while. time. Me too. And, and I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing it, but mm-hmm. I feel like the Holy Ghost was moving me in this direction. Like, hey, nah, st- you got to do this. And I was, yeah. t- I was telling my wife, and I wish I would have uh, kind of honed in on it because I wanted to do drop shipping. I wanted to do uh, uh, Amazon smart. affiliate stuff, right? And I Very was building smart. up for it, but for some reason I stopped. And yeah. when the pandemic hit, and yeah. then I read a newspaper, online sales went up seventy five percent. I said, you know something, <laughs> <laughs> never again. <laughs> yeah, but and, and, and that fast too. Yeah. Right? yeah, I mean quick, quick, yeah, quick. And, and I think that's things gonna are not going to go back to They're yeah, not. the old state. Right. People keep saying, oh, I can't wait till we get back to normal. And I'm like, <laughs> what is wait. that? <laughs> this is your yeah. normal. <laughs> this is right. your normal. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. it's not going to. What, was, what happened in 2019 or 2018, anything before 2020, those, you have to take that as a memory. That's how yeah. things used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's about to happen is not going to be the same. It's, Man, not. it's never going to snap back to the no, same. No, it's not. And the crazy part is, you don't want to you want to adapt to what right. life is right anything right. life brings you you want to somehow mm-hmm. it's always mm-hmm. a way to adapt to it yeah i'm gonna let right. my wife talk because i'm not a woman you're not a woman <laughs> you definitely not i mean you just take a lot of talk you're you just talking baby. You just, no, you but you agree. a talker though he a talker. <laughs> but that's the thing i mean because even you started buying this equipment i'm like why are you buying all this stuff like he started like it was 20 like 2018 2019 just investing in and like just stuff lots of stuff right stuff. All right, first of all me? it's not stuff <laughs> it's it's I knew exactly what i was yeah. investing in and i'm sitting here and i'm like why <laughs> you, do you, need, you know like why do we need this and why do we need that and so but i didn't get it investing. and then like you said when the when the pandemic hit mm-hmm. i was like oh you smart yeah. Like that's that's really all I can say is oh my god. So you should smart. yeah, you're smart, babe. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very smart. But that's the thing and I I I see I saw how I mean because we're wearing I'll say the original, right? This is that's the original. One of the, so that was one of the what what did I call that line? That was the nineties, um the nineties line, yes. <laughs> Hoorah, <laughs> sucker! <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and so like from going here and then looking mm-hmm. at like the vibrant colors of yeah. what you're the doing now, and the look of it, and then the love that you're getting on social media. I mean, so I saw that growth in just what because it's been only like a few months since yeah. we have been introduced to each other. Yeah. So to right. see that growth within like. A few months, it was like, man, yeah, like mad love. Um, and but can you share what has been like the most challenging part of having that entrepreneurial side? What has been challenging for the most? Um, and let's say with but without the pandemic, and then now mm-hmm. that we are going through this phase of the pandemic, yeah, um. Well, if I have to start back with the beginning of the pandemic, it would have been, how am I going to do this? Mm. That was just the first question. Um, if nobody's going outside, why would they need clothes? Yeah. <laughs> they sit at home like, in their PJs. Want, yeah, like people were, people literally were, were wearing their pajamas as everyday clothing at this point for the last couple of months. Because right. where, where, where were you going? Some big blue pajamas. Some big blue pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> coming up. It's coming. Come on, yes. <laughs> lay around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was a mindset of what what am I going to do? What will I do to make the demand of my brand still valuable mm-hmm. so that people still want it? Because um, if things are shut down and people are not going anywhere, why would they? What would they want it for? You know, because you can just go buy a t shirt and a sweatshirt whatever from any store mm-hmm. so you don't have to you know what's, what is what am i offering that they really care to buy my brand mm-hmm. so 
I had to do a shift, and the shift was rebrand, reinvent, start over. Oh, I like start that. Over. That's a and t-shirt I literally right there. Say that again. That's a t-shirt Re- right there. That is Re-brand, a t-shirt. Re-brand, re-brand, re-brand. <laughs> well, we will write this down as soon as the show is so. over. Yeah. And don't try to take our stuff <laughs> either. Take Let me stop. <laughs> We're gonna split it. We're gonna split it. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. Y'all talking about the podcast. People are like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Writing it down. Gotta go ahead and brand that already. <laughs> no, really, because that, that is. That's a t shirt. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, so so rebranding and then um working on the online marketing side. So um do I have time to fit in that piece of mm-hmm. I just want to make sure I'm not, you know. Okay. Oh, this, oh, this is our podcast. <laughs> I know. I just hey, didn't want to. Ain't nobody boss over us. Nobody can say us the time. I'll, I'll upload a three-hour podcast if I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I pay the cost to be the boss. Let's die. <laughs> I want to make sure I stick to the schedule. Like, I don't want to go, you know, too long for nah, anything you're good, either. Cause I, okay. I, I, I think people need to hear this. Yeah. Because okay. while they're sitting at home in their pajamas, <laughs> like they need to hear, or those who are listening to us on the road, on the road. I believe road. people need this type of stuff to show mm-hmm. them how to get out. Because mm-hmm. we're, like I said, we're all stuck in the bubble. It, it just wasn't the NBA. No. We all, yeah, still <laughs> we're all in stuck the in the you bubble. Right. And this type of light that is being shined that you're giving us is always mm-hmm. good. So I will never cut it off. I'll never say, oh, it's time to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. I won't okay. do that. I guarantee you. We go okay. two, three hours if we have to. And, and like for me, and people listen to it. They will. Yeah, they will. So just go ahead and, you know, spill your heart out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I was going to say the other uh, part of that was um, once I reset my mind to say, okay, I have to uh, start over, reinvent, rebrand, and just start from scratch to figure out now what's the next level with the marketing and online exposure. Because if things are at a standstill, no one's coming in the store. There's no yeah. foot traffic. So you got to, I still have my nine to five, which is, you know, a blessing. So that's mm-hmm. good. But I still have to be able to promote my brand because the stores are, are closed. Or yeah. Even if they're open, there's still not that foot traffic. Yeah. That used to be. It's different. People yeah. don't come out like they used to and just uh-huh. go to the mall like they used to. So, um, <clears throat> so with that, um, brought the blessing of the downtime at work. So because work is the same same scenario, no one's coming into the behavioral health clinic like they Ooh. were before the pandemic. Before, gotcha. I would be a little stressed out. And I have 10 kids that need to be enrolled for services because I, I do enrollment there. I'm not sure if I mentioned that part, but um, I do enrollment, enroll the children for services, for therapy, uh, for different um, behavioral health services. Okay. So I had that downtime there. And with the downtime, I'm now on my phone playing around with different, you know, um, things on social media trying to update my page, my page, Uh um, looking online to see, you know, what other people are doing, what are Mm -hmm. they doing right now during the pandemic? Yeah. And I'm noticing people are adapting fast, you know, now everybody's running some type of ad, you know, whatever (laughs) it is Mm -hmm. (laughs) instantly, you know, and I'm, I'm still learning at this point. I'm still behind, but I'm, I'm looking to see what they're doing. And it just seemed like the industry went from going into a store to nobody caring about going into a store anymore. Yeah, everything right. was about clicking that shop button mm-hmm. online, submit, <laughs> and done. And that's it. That's it. That was it. That's it. Nobody cared about anything but the shop button. If they could find a shop button on their phone or an app on their mm-hmm. phone that took you to yeah. the shop button, mm-hmm. that was it. So I said, I got to find a, a way that people want to click on my page and shop. What can I do to bring them in? And I just, for so many weeks, I just kept you know, trying to research and see what's going on, um, add little things here and there with my brand, but at the same time, make sure that I'm staying active because Mm. the other thing I was thinking, if I don't start posting something, people are going to forget about me fast. Facts. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have content, then I can't post anything. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a matter of just juggling things fast. So 
that's when I uh, worked on the shirts that you guys have on okay. um, the the 90s vibe. I was like, okay, everybody's into music right now. Everybody noticed there's DJs DJing on social media all day long. Right. <laughs> so everybody had that, you know, that moment back in the 90s where they loved something from that era, whether it was the big hoop earrings for the girls, mm-hmm. the cassette tape, the boom box. Yeah. Um, the headphones mm-hmm. so I did the uh, cassette tape which you have on the boom box mm-hmm. um, shirt and then the headphones all three, three of them done very well mm. and that was kind of like my little like ticket to get back active on online Okay, I just kind of kept trying to market those and they seemed to bring in a crowd that I needed to now look at my page a little bit more got you So that's kind of like where that traffic um, came from. And then um, shortly after that, from again, having the downtime online, I joined, um, which was someone I had already looked up to for the longest time as a business uh, mentor, but never in my wildest dreams that I ever think I would get the opportunity to not only meet him, but for him to see me. Mm. And I stress see me because you never think that someone of that caliber will mm-hmm. will look at you or gotcha. even see you in the crowd because you, again that small word you're thinking oh I'm small yeah. you know yeah. they won't notice me and um, the person I'm speaking of is his name is Kenny Burns and within a matter of months he became my virtual mentor wow which. I was already following him. I Mm -hmm. had already seen his work and knew um, what he was capable of doing in his resume. But again, I'm thinking I'll just be someone in the crowd, you know, in the live, but he's not going to ever pay attention to me. And um, he took my phone call on his show uh, in September, sorry, in August, the end of August. And I just had one question to ask him. And I just wanted to know, should I close my store or should I keep it open? Because mm. at this time I was thinking, I'm just going to close. I'm done. Yeah. Like I, It's too much. You can't do it. Mm. Right. And he said, no, you shouldn't close your store. Not right now. Just d- don't fold. Don't, mm. you know, mm. don't fold and just think that just because the pandemic is going on, now you have to completely close and not have anything going on at all. That still can be an outlet for you, mm. but work on your online in the meantime. Mm. Mm. Smart so, plan. yeah, so I re I did um, do like a re grand opening of the store in uh, September or Labor Day weekend, and I called him back to let him know. I said I took your advice. And I'm opening back, you know, reopening the store for the grand mm. opening. And he was super excited, super supportive within, um, I don't know, the first couple hours of reopening the store that weekend. He had all of his followers and some of his um, uh, people, the, sorry, the people that watch his live yeah. often, they were so supportive right away. And flooded my account like instantly wow yeah that's good they stuff. Were, wow they were so yeah they were so so supportive so that actually triggered me to even want to work harder now i was like okay i can do this gotcha i can get over that hump. wow it's called yeah. light at the end of the tunnel light. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so because he, he seen my light it gave me um it gave me motivation to mm-hmm. continue because, again, I was thinking of just being done. Yeah, wow. And yeah. I think it's good that uh, I would say he uh, resurrected you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, brought and, me back. Yeah, yeah, especially in a time like this because mm-hmm. this, this right here is where people have, they feel like they have every excuse mm-hmm. to give up. Right. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, it's no excuse to give up. If it's breath in your body, and I always right. tell you, you have breath in your body, trust. You can push mm-hmm. through. Good. Activities right. of your limbs, you can you push good. through. Trust yeah. me. Mm-hmm. It, it, you just got to find that will. 
Right. right. And make a way. And make a way. <laughs> and make a way. Right. By any means. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's your so. time. No, I'm, I'm not a woman. You're not a woman. I cannot <laughs> deal with you now. Hey, hey. What has been out of, because I know you, you just rebranded, and then you had, mm-hmm. you know, the 90s gear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, what? bro. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I can't with him. You just over the top. <laughs> what, which, I guess, which item has been your favorite to work on? Yeah. Um, from the new... The re the rebranding from between the rebranding the nineties like out of oh. like which what was your um, favorite? I think this this last launch was my favorite. Wow! The the hues of of the blue. Mm. This might have been my favorite because um, the transition and the change the shift and change that I I had to take to get to this mm-hmm. launch. Might have been the most uh, not challenging, but it was it was it was great to see that what I started with of uh, just a you know a, a few pieces here and there. Like for example, what you had one, I started with just a few pieces, not realizing that when you create a whole limited edition or. Um, exclusive edition Mm -hmm. uh, apparel line that that's going to be the change the change maker for you the game changer I should say for you so with this blue um, the shades of blue is what it's called that this particular line that one was me Mm -hmm. that that one was me and that's what he was trying to get out of me Um, Kenny he he was he, he said um, long story short, when he looked at my brand at the time on the website, he didn't see Virginia Blue. The shirts were great. You know, he loved what he seen, but it was like, that's still not, I'm not seeing you. Mm. Mm. And the homework he gave me was write down 10 things that represent you and your brand and what mm. you love and like to do. And I was like, that's simple, you know. Of course, I can write that down. But then when I got to writing it down, I was like, I only got two things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why am I getting stuck on this? Right. Um, yeah. And I know what I love and like. No, I got but... cheeseburger. I got fries. What's that stuff? It's not good. <laughs> Can't find it. I'm like, okay, wait, let me let me focus. Let me really, really focus on what it is that I really love, that I'm really passionate about. And it was so easy. It was like, um, I'm not going to give you all of them now, but just to name the, the first, like, three or four, my family. Mm. Um, I, love the, I love the color blue. I love the ocean. The ocean is what brings me peace. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so water, to me, is, is you know, life. Gotcha. And that's a, a key piece to life. Um and I love to travel. Um, I love being an entrepreneur. I love I love having and setting my own standards and, and boundaries, you know, for myself. So just writing down those key things, starting with family and and um, things that I like to do, like activity wise, like travel and, and being in the ocean and, and feeling free and at peace. He he helped me create this shades of blue from that because wow. now it looks like me. Right mm. now it shows the you know the color that I love. If you look on my website, the ocean is the background mm-hmm. that brings me peace. Yeah, um, it still represents my grandmother because it's Virginia blue, but now right. it has a, a mantra and a purpose behind right. it that takes over even stuff. bigger. Yeah. yeah. And now I can say it, you know, with a smile and I'm like, it's vibrant, blessed, love, union. Like, mm. you yeah. know, I, I can speak it now and really Come like feel now. it versus just like, you know, it's Virginia Blue. It's just a regular brand. But it's like, no, it's, it has a bigger purpose yeah. besides yeah. just my grandmother. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. I think it's good because not only did I, I, now I'm going to teach this thing. Okay, man. you too. Okay, I might as well go ahead and sit up. But, uh, <laughs> but 
it's good <laughs> that you found is what I say all the time. It was missing. What people do not have is identity. Mm -hmm. Not only mm -hmm. did you find identity in yourself, but you found identity in your business. Right. And who knew that they both go together? <laughs> right. So right. I mean, I mean that to me, your mentor is, is, is definitely awesome. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, blessing to, it's, to pull it's, it out. I would yeah. like, I would like to pick his me. brain. <laughs> hey, Kenny, when you watch this, <laughs> you better like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, <laughs> and then we want you on the show. <laughs> but to find identity in yourself and then to find identity in what you love to do is an awesome thing. That's mm -hmm. like a double mm -hmm. thing. Like for right. me, um, I am looking forward to seeing the growth of not only just you know your your business but the growth of you mm -hmm. within itself um mm -hmm. i see such a um a total different light over you right about now is it is you you look comfortable mm -hmm. but still not comfortable enough to stop right more right. like i'm comfortable but guess what mm -hmm. i got some other obstacles mm -hmm. i gotta go ahead and take right. care of Right. But um, I am uh, I'm thrilled that you came on the show, yeah. uh, the podcast Thank for you. those who are riding in the car. Riding in the car, <laughs> we will. I thought you was gonna keep saying we love riding. In the car. I was, but then I said, man, <laughs> you doing too much already. <laughs> <laughs> But acting up all right, day. All day. So, uh, <laughs> but we definitely will. I'm going to have you tell people what your website is mm -hmm. to the people mm -hmm. who are riding in the car, our podcast listeners. Truly, thank you for listening in. Yes. But V Blue is going to give, you know, where she's at, all your uh, your social media, your website, all that stuff. So we can bring people to you. Yeah. Keep you yes. sold out. That's Come that's tell you. Yes. yes. Um, so the uh, website is v-blue.com. Um, the current line that has been launched on that on that site right now is Shades of Blue, um, which has been doing very well, and it's somewhat sold out. So you might not find a lot of merchandise on there right now. But <laughs> she got a Black um, Friday is, going on. Right. <laughs> But it is still available. There are still some pieces um, that are available. Um, my social media is Virginia Blue Apparel. So at Virginia Blue Apparel, that's on um, Instagram and Facebook. I also do have a um, Pinterest account too. But as far as the business core, it's mm -hmm. um, Instagram and then Facebook. Got you. Yes. And then my store is still currently open. Um, that is in Philadelphia also, which is, uh, 2141 Topman Avenue in uh, Northeast Philly. So those are the, the places you can find me. And we will have all that somewhere around here, somewhere, you know, trust, we will have all of <laughs> all that. that. We oh. did that for our people who are driving in the car yes. so they can go ahead and pull over. And go, <laughs> and go and buy some work. apparel. And y'all DM her if it's something that you want yeah. and is not available. DM and let her know. So then that way she can at least um, keep you in contact. You yeah, know? yeah. Our Spotify yeah. listeners, all yeah. our, uh, you know, Google podcasts. Because we will be them. having some V Blue over here. As you yes. say. Because, you yeah. know, we got, <laughs> we got the 90s. Yeah. Right yeah. 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 Hey. Little retro on you. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to get that new, new too. You know, hey. <laughs> yes. But, yes, we got to get you the new. For sure. Yeah, we will. So. And we also will be, we, we truly believe in supporting businesses right. and, and those who are trying to do this thing especially in the pandemic mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, it's hard. Car, it, you know i know it's difficult but like yeah. i said it, it brings it brings such a great thing out of us right mm -hmm. and and it does. To, you know it we got to be pushed some way good because we get comfortable yeah we right. just sit here and chill my mother was sitting in my pajamas. No, right. create. <laughs> 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 we were yes, born sir. to create right. so that's why right. you know and it's good to see you as a as a young lady living out, you know, her dreams and really doing what she needs to do. One thing I do want you to do before you do disappear off and start swimming off. Um, <laughs> I want you to speak to the young lady or the young man who wants to get into business. Give them such a encouraging word. 
Oh, wow. Um, I would say to um, always follow your dreams. Um, as my mentor say, says, the dream is real, which it is, because um, you can dream big and dream about all the things that you want to do, but don't just leave them as a thought. Well. Make them come to reality. However you have to do it, whether it takes you two years, five years, 10 years, even if it takes you 20 years, if, if it took you that long to get to fulfill your dreams, that's fine. There is no, there's no expiration on your dream. It can happen at any time. Yeah. So I would say to always um, keep faith and be positive. Yeah. Be positive and, and keep one thing I would stress, if I could say this, keep a positive circle around you. Um, because negativity is like cancer. It loves to feed off of you. All so, day. Mm -hmm. Yes, all it day. does. So keep positive people around you and keep a good circle at all times because those are the people that are going to be there for you at the end throughout the whole journey. So that would be my, my words of, of motivation and inspiration. I like that. Love that. See, I, 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 got, wait, I, I, I guarantee yeah. my wife is looking up something. <laughs> Uh -oh. what she was doing. Hush. What's Stop that. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. She's looking up something. I'm talking to the people in the car. Yes, I am. I'm looking. She is looking for some type of quote or something. You know I am. To back <laughs> what she just said. I am. Okay. And I'm just trying to find the whole thing, but I don't think it's going to give me the whole thing. But I'm going to just go from right here what I got. Um, When you just said uh, about, you know, about the dream, right? Mm-hmm. So it made me think of, um, I teach ELA and we were just uh, talking because it's Black History Month. So we were just talking about uh, Langston Hughes, A Dream Deferred. And so I was breaking the poem down for them. So I just want to give like um, this little s snippet of this Langston Hughes. I'm just only with this poetry tonight. I think you I'm going to teach that this week. So it says, um, and this is A Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes. And it's just uh, a stanza. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? And I think it's like what happens to a dream deferred? Like that was just the icing on the cake because, right. and I think you always say that too, is if there's a dream but no vision behind it, it just will not come to fruition. Or you say something like that. I think you're pretty positive when you said that. I, I listened a little bit. Um, and so that's, that's the thing that I think um, young women and young men as, you know, who want to not only just do entrepreneur, entrepreneurial work, Take your time. but <laughs> but it's the allergies trying to get me, man. And no, um, but if we always have that dream, but we either never go after or we never bring it into real form, right. then yeah. it will do those things. It will dry up like a raisin and you're going to throw it away. So you got full grapes and then mm -hmm. they just set out in the sun and just turned into little pruny raisins. Right. Or, you know, once a sore kind of fester mm -hmm. and then it start oozing like that's nasty. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you did just, like, <laughs> you just had that. But like it makes you think like, OK, if I don't do anything with this dream, it's mm -hmm. just put off. Right. It's just so that's point. that defer. So what mm -hmm. I think what we've learned tonight or today or whenever when this thing drops. drops. <laughs> <laughs> when this podcast dropped, the thing that we've learned is that no matter what the circumstances or what life may throw us, we cannot defer our dream. Mm -mm. And, you know, and it goes into, I mean, it's just all like, all this is just like tied in. I know. Like, right. We need to, we should. I don't got no lace and hues, but what let you, me tell you what, you what Mr. Made over said. Okay. <laughs> what did Mr. <laughs> what, what, Mr. This Mouse guy said, said what he say? It's okay to dream, but at some point you have to get up and do something. Mm -hmm. A dream without a plan is just a wish. See, I told you you said that. I just and, said it in different but ways. It goes back to what also right. biblically it mm -hmm. says a person with no dream mm -hmm. or, or with no, no vision. vision. 
perishes. Yeah. So if mm-hmm. you don't have any type of vision for your life, right. I guarantee you, you will find yourself in the quickest of the sand. Mm-hmm. Because if you Absolutely. don't have, a, and that just doesn't go for business, that go for your life. No. life yeah. like, for your life, exactly. Me as a husband, I have a a vision and a plan for my family mm-hmm. and my children, children to extend right. out. You know, transferable mm-hmm. legacy. Am I, am I, am I teaching? Yeah, you are. You about to hear? I'm just laying back. You know, I, was about just, to like hear I forgot. I forgot. I'm not a woman. Like, but like. <laughs> to conclude this. <laughs> Any type of dream that you had, yes, it's a great dream, but don't let it just become a wish. Right. Right. Do something. Do something with that. As right. you see, it's possible. Mm-hmm. V Blue is out here doing this, even in pandemic. Damn so it, what's your man, excuse? Damn it. No there, there, excuse. There's no excuse exactly. for nobody to attack what they need to attack. Because excuses right. are just they what? Polished up lies. <laughs> <laughs> So my dad is saying. Yes. <laughs> but we truly thank you for coming on. Yes. Um, I'm going to let my wife you. close this one out. Uh, I'm doing what? a lot of things. Oh my God. You know, I'm not a woman. You're not a woman. But um, we definitely want to say thank you so much for coming out. Coming out. Well, you, you, come, you come, coming on our meeting. I, I did come out. You come yeah. come out on our to be on our podcast. She's out the box. Out the box. Yeah, well, that is true too. Yeah. Coming out of your comfort zone um, and just allowing us that uh, opportunity to have you on our podcast because mm-hmm. it's not you Thank know you. something that we know that you do and this is you know new. It's well, it ain't new for him, but it's new <laughs> <laughs> new for me as well. Um, but we are so grateful of the words of wisdom that you have yeah. um, poured out to our listeners, poured out to our watchers, and then poured out to us as yeah. um, you know the host of this podcast. Well, yeah, I'm host of this podcast. Oh, <laughs> um, but <laughs> we we definitely wish you like nothing but success and blessings over your business, yeah. thank um, you, and over everything that you do and touch. So. We are here to support, boo. Yeah, and anything you want, anything you want, um, let us know. We are definitely willing to help because I believe um, in this life and in this business, you can't do everything by yourself. You need a team. You need a team. So uh, I'm I'm definitely down with helping people who are like-minded and not lazy-minded. Not Not lukewarm. I need a whole crew of go getters. Right. Oh my God. Yes. So, uh, whatever you need, I I mean, uh, I'm sure we're just a text or phone call away. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I know how to. I know how to find. You. Yeah, and we know how to find you. Yeah, uh, we got yeah. your store address. We got the store address. Pull up on you. Right. Yeah. On. <laughs> hey. Fly on down the freeway. Hey, why you do that? You know we foodies now we too. Are, yeah, Might yeah. be in your area. You eat, get that food in, get a shirt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Man, the road, the road trip, you never know. I'm trying yes. to tell you, we got a whole foodie crew. We, we can eat and get shirts. Yes, that's <laughs> right? it. <laughs> but this is where we say right about this time. Keep God first. And the rest will be added. Thank you for watching. Why are you like you're shooting the people? Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you. That's better. Thank, Thank you, you for watching. Yeah. Is that better? Appreciate it. Thank you. So my people in the car ride just did different hangs. Yeah, he did. That's all he did. And we're really out.